Baptist um, here at God's house today. And so we're thankful that you're here with us this morning. Let's be much in prayer um, for the hour of service today. Look for God to do something great today. And my heart is very heavy this morning um, in interest to those that are lost. And my prayer is that um, if you're here today and you're lost, maybe you're young, maybe you're old, uh, maybe you're somewhere in the middle, and um, I have no idea who you are or what's in your heart, um, but my prayer is that you leave here today satisfied, that you leave here today knowing um, that you know Christ as your personal Savior. That's the most important thing um, that any of us could gain in this life. We seek for uh, treasure down here, and, and we all um, want things down here, and we all um, want to enjoy life to the fullest, but um, I found that um, you know money can't buy happiness. I, I don't know if you've ever thought about that. I'm in the bathroom this morning, Paxton walked up and he said, Dad, he said, you know, and he listens to the radio a lot, but he said, Dad, you know what? He said, money can't buy you happiness. And I said, you're right, son. He said, but it can buy you a boat. <laughs> he said, it can buy you a truck to pull it. And I said, yeah, Paxton. I said, but uh, the good things are from above, son, and they come from the Lord. And um, he grinned and he said, I know, Dad. So folks, listen, all the good things, they come from above. They come from God, and um, so I'm thankful today to know that I'm saved this morning, and to know that if, you know, tomorrow doesn't come, that I've got a better place to go. And um, I, I don't worry about dying, and I, I'm going to talk, I might just go ahead and preach, I don't know, but uh, I, I'm going to say this, um, you know, I, I don't worry about dying, I'll be honest, that's not, um, never crosses my mind, to be honest with you, I worry about living. Um, think about that a minute. Think about what I just said. Dying doesn't concern me. Um, I know when I pass from this life, i got a better place to go. Not afraid of it. I don't worry about it. Um, I worry about living. So, um, you know, it's good to be saved this morning. It really is. Um, you all be much in prayer. We'll ask the men if they would to come, take up the morning's offering. Brother Brandon, would you please bless the offering? Amen. Thank God for the offering this morning. I pray that God would bless it to the upbuild of His kingdom. I wonder at this time if anybody's got a song on their heart. Anybody with a song? All right. If not, everybody be in prayer um, this morning. I'm not going to argue with you about singing. I'm ready to preach, so I'll just go ahead, all right? 
Uh, you got, got your Bibles? Everybody's thinking, oh no. Uh, got your Bibles? Want to turn with us to the book of Acts, chapter 3. Got some scripture today. I'm going to read today in your hearing. And I'm thankful for everybody that's came out this morning. I look out and see the house full. I, I was sitting there wondering to myself, have we not hit the um, summer log yet where everybody starts to vanish or have we finally got to the capacity here at the church that we can um, cope with that and, and I'll be honest we got a lot of people missing today so maybe we're getting to the capacity that um, we can overcome that today with uh, people and so thank God for all the growth in the church and I uh, give him all the thanks all the praise all the honor all the credit um, without God you know what none of us are anything today it, it takes God for me to get out of the bed every morning. We um, at times think that we're really something, but I, I want you folks to know something today. Um, if God didn't wake me up this morning, Charles, I don't even have the ability um, to get up and clothe myself without God's help. So I'm nothing today, and neither are you, um, but let's all pray this morning. I want everybody's attention today. It's a little, um, little noisy this morning. I want your attention today. I've got a message that God um, has gave me today and um, want you to pay attention. I um, began to think um, about something that happened earlier to me this week. It amazes me as a dad. Um, some of you new dads can really relate to this. Some of these, um, it amazes me how that Paxton, as he grows up, some of the things um, that he does and some of the things that he says and um, some of the things that he humbles me in, in just a lot of ways. But um, earlier in the week, I took him down to the boat ramp there below the house, and we were down there fishing, and um, he was over there fishing, and he was wearing it out, you know, and I just sat down on the dock, and, and it was peaceful, and it was quiet, um, and the Lord came by, and, and God's presence just came and just overwhelmed me, and I uh, began to talk to the Lord. I hope that every one of you have had times in your life that I'm about to tell you about because um, it's going to go along with my message today but um, I began to rejoice and before I knew it you know the tears were just rolling out of my eyes and I had glory bumps and um, uh, all the above rejoicing there you know just me and Paxton and the Lord and he was over there just a throwing and uh, finally he looked at me and he said daddy's not catching nothing he said let's go to the house and he he looked at me and he saw those tears rolling and he said daddy said you talking to Jesus again, aren't you? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm talking to him, Paxton. He just walked over there and sat down beside me and he said, I'm going to talk to him too. And so, you know, uh, the, the moral of this story is the longer we sat there, um, Paxton began to rejoice with me. And so uh, when we got done, you know, with our time there, he looked at me and he said, man, he said, Jesus really loves me and you, Dad. And we got home and he said, Mama, he said, me and Dad's had church down there. And so, folks, let's have church today, all right? Let's rejoice and let's worship in God uh, and what He has created for you and I and the things that He's gave us in life. We need to rejoice and um, appreciate those things today. So, uh, got your Bibles. Uh, want to turn with me. Chapter 2. I'm sorry. Chapter 2 of the book of Acts. I want to read to you very familiar scripture and give you a thought that God... Um, it's pressed on her heart, and we're going to talk about, preach about the day of Pentecost and some things that happened there. Um, but we're going to start in chapter 2, the book of Acts. We're going to start at verse 29. Um, I began to think about, and I want to throw this question out there before I preach this morning. Is there um, anybody here today that is convicted in their hearts and sinner and wants to be saved this morning? Would you come up and pray? Preacher, that's kind of strange. Well, I pretty much knew what was going to happen when I asked that question. I'm going to ask the same question when I get done preaching the message this morning. And I hope and pray that somebody will come forward today and accept Christ as their personal Savior. I wanted to ask that question to get you thinking about it and to get you um, considering it. And when I get done uh, delivering the message today, um, if you feel God drawing you and you feel Jesus knocking at your heart, uh, I want to encourage you to come and open your heart and welcome Him into your life. It's the best thing that um, I ever done, Charles. When I accepted Christ as my Savior, it was the best uh, thing that I've ever done. 
ever, to be honest with you, I've never done anything good. That's the only good thing that I've ever done, to be honest, besides getting Mandy. But uh, anyways, that was the only good choice that I ever made, Charles, was accepting Christ. Um, every decision I've made since then that has worked out and that has turned out good, it's been based off of that one decision I made in choosing Christ as my Savior. So I, uh, I want you to pray. Chapter 2, the book of Acts, we're going to start reading 29th verse. This is Peter's message. He said, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that is both dead and buried and is in the sepulcher which is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. And seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended unto the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now pay attention to verse 37. It says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now that's all I want to read this morning. I want you to pray that God um, would help us today and, and with the message this morning. And um, the thought and what I want to preach about comes out of verse 37. And the thought today is pricked in their hearts. I want you to think about that um, for just a few minutes. And, and I'm going to be as brief as I possibly can. And I know some of you all are excited about that. Uh, I'm going to be as brief as I can today and, and deliver this message, hopefully with as much power uh, and as much spirit as God will allow me to. I uh, begin to think about um, this situation and this occasion. And, and you read about how that Christ, while He was here, uh, He said, I, I, while I'm here, I'm going to be the light. But when I go away, I'm going to leave you the light. And I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send my spirit. Um, and it's going to come. And, and you're going to have it. And so um, the day of Pentecost, if you read before this, the Bible said that they were in one place and they were in one accord uh, and the Holy Spirit fell that day, Dan, and, and Peter began to preach and um, there was prophesying and, and no doubt this was a great revival service, I guess, that uh, broke out there that day and, and so um, some of you all have been in some great services before, right? Uh, I mean church services or revivals or crusades or uh, tent revivals or, or whatever you want to call it. There was a great uh, pouring out of the Holy Spirit that day. I'd like to see a great pouring out of the Holy Spirit today, wouldn't you? I'd like to see God uh, just come by today, and I mean just pour out His love and pour out His Spirit on everybody that's in the building today. Wouldn't that be great? I'm talking about an upper room experience today, one that uh, you couldn't soon forget, one that would touch you down deep inside your soul today. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about some things and, and maybe preach about some things and uh, I began to think about what everybody was expecting that day. I guess when uh, Peter opened his mouth and he began to preach and he began to proclaim uh, about Jesus Christ and about him crucified and uh, guess what? He had already resurrected. Aren't you thankful today for the resurrection of Christ that uh, brother and sisters that he ascended and that he went back to be with the Father and that uh, he's seated on the right hand of God. That's what Peter was beginning to tell them about. That uh, Christ had arose and that he had went away and that uh, he had made a promise to David. See, they could relate with who David was. David was dear uh, to these people's hearts. He was a patriarch. He uh, was someone great. He was the king. And so, uh, But David believed in an oath. The Bible talks about the oath that uh, he believed in. That Christ was real and that, uh, that God was going to raise up a 
a king out of his loins. And folks, I want you to know something today. I've never been over in the Holy Lands and I've never saw the tomb. And uh, Charles, I've never saw where they laid Jesus at. Uh, but I know that he's not there today. Preacher, how do you know that today? I know he's not there. I know he's not dead. Why? Because I feel him living in me today. I know that there's an empty tomb, Bobby, and I know that he's alive. Why? Because I feel him. Why? Because I see, I see him today. Don't you? Uh, preacher, have you ever saw him before? I see him in nature. I see him in you. I see him in me. I see him in us today. I see his love in us today. Isn't that wonderful? Now I begin to think about um, their reaction. The Bible said that they were pricked in their hearts. Now, I want you to know something today. They, uh, since I've been the pastor here, I've changed my mind about a few things. And uh, I'm not ashamed to uh, acknowledge that today. You know, the, these pants and uh, the music. And I could just go on and on about things that uh, I've changed my mind about. That's all right today. But uh, one thing that I will not change my mind about today, and that is the fact you've got to be pricked in your heart today before you can become a child of God. You've got to uh, come under conviction and you've got to come under a sorrow and there's uh, got to be a change made inside of you. The Bible said that uh, when these men heard that they were pricked in their hearts and I want you to know something today. I remember a seven year old boy. This, uh, this conviction sets up at different times in people's lives. They uh, realize that they're a sinner. Uh, Charles as a seven year old boy I was pricked in my heart. I was broken. These men were uh, broken when they heard about Jesus when Peter got done uh, proclaiming the word of God. Their hearts were pricked. In other words their hearts were broken. I remember as a seven year old boy my heart was broken. I heard the gospel preached. I heard the man tell me about Jesus. I, I heard the story about how he hung on the cross and I heard the story about how he died for my sins and I went to Sunday school and my teacher taught me uh, that he died for me. I heard about all that uh, but as a seven year old boy conviction set up inside of me. I became condemned. I, I became sorrowful. There was something changed inside of me and guess what? When that happened I wanted to be saved and I wanted to accept Jesus and I want you to know this today if you're here today and you're lost in undone what does it mean to be lost today that simply means I realized as a seven year old boy I wasn't that smart and I didn't know all about it but I realized that I was in trouble and I realized that I was separated from God and I realized that my sins you know what I'm talking about right I realized that there had to be something changed in my life if I was going to get to heaven folks now listen I want you to know something today. There's something inside of me. There's something inside of every one of you that God created in us. And, and some people call it a soul. And uh, some people call it the inner man. And uh, some people call it this. And some people call it that. I want you to know something. When God made me and when God made you and when God made Adam and when God made Eve and uh, when God made this whole creation, I'm talking about me and you, uh, men and women, He created something inside of us that was void, something that was empty and folks it's something that only Christ can feel today it's something that was made for him and it's something that he's the only one that can feel this morning I'll tell you what you can try to find happiness in all these other things Ed, but there's something down inside of me and there's something down inside of you all know what I'm talking about this week y'all going to have to wake up a little bit there's something inside of us today folks I'm telling you today a something that was empty and something that was void and couldn't be something that was lost but it was created it was made for Jesus and as a seven year old boy I opened my heart and I accepted him and he filled that void in my life doesn't matter who you are today you've got that void in you 
Do you realize that? You've got that part inside of you. Now listen, I, I can't explain it all and I can't uh, draw you a picture of it and I don't know what it looks like, uh, but I want you to know today that um, if you're saved, it's filled today. If you're saved, you're full today. You know what I mean? Saved people are different than lost people. Do you all realize that? Saved people are full today. Lost people are empty today. If you're here today and you're empty, Jesus wants to fill your cup. Wants to fill your heart. Wants to fill your life. Wants to give you joy. Wants to give you happiness. Boy, for all you people to be saved, there sure is a bunch of old long face looks today. You know what I mean? People, listen to me. Folks, if you're saved by God's marvelous grace today, we've got a better place to go. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got a place that's been prepared for you and I today. When they heard the message... It pricked their hearts. It pierced their souls. I remember um, the man of God that preached to me when, when the gospel fell. You, you, I went from playing with trucks and I went from playing with cars. And uh, people's all the time asking me, preacher, you think my kids should play with their trucks? I'll be honest with you, a lot of times I'd like to play with the trucks. But uh, listen to me, I went from playing with the trucks and I went from building barns out of the songbooks to uh, my heart was pierced inside of me. Charles, there was a sorrow overcame me and I realized that I needed Jesus in that spot in my life. Derek, how in the world could that happen? It pierced my soul. You hear what I'm saying? It pricked my heart. Do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, just like these men, I went from being all right to being under conviction. What do you mean conviction? I realized that I was a sinner. I realized, when, when I believe that when people are lost, and when they get under conviction, they become sorrowful. You know what I mean? In other words, as a seven-year-old boy, uh, you snap your fingers, Bobby, I got sorry all of a sudden. Sorry for what? Sorry that a man man had to bleed. Sorry that a man had to die. Sorry that a man had to give his life for me. I was sorrowful. Do you realize that for your salvation it cost Jesus his life? Huh? That he had to bleed, that he had to die, and he had to take a beating, and they whooped him, and they smote him. I believe these grown men right here, these big grown men, I believe all of a sudden they became humble as little children. Amen? Listen to me today, folks. When you come under conviction, God softens you. Do you realize that? And it changes you. Anybody relate with me today? Does it not soften you? Does it not change you? Grover, when I came under conviction, it changed my life that day. What do you mean, Derek? I mean, as a seven-year-old boy, I got concerned about some things. Amen. I got concerned about eternity. I got concerned about, e oh my goodness, I got concerned about my soul, and I got concerned about my welfare, and I got concerned where I was going to spend eternity at. Folks, if you're here today and you're concerned about this, I want to invite you to come today. Jesus wants to touch your heart. These big, grown men got concerned. Got concerned about what? Concerned about their well-being. Amen? Concerned about their destiny. Oh, listen to me. Ever since Jesus came into my life, I, I, I preach that when He saves you, He changes you. Amen? When Jesus saved my soul, and He changed me. Do you realize that? He took out the stony heart and He put... Woo, hallelujah! I'm telling you what, folks. He fixed me that day. My goodness, I think about... Mm. Derek, what do I got to do? The Bible said these men realized that they were pricked in their hearts and, and there, was, there was some things happened right here. They realized that they were nasty. Amen? Oh, he said in Isaiah, he said, Though your sins be as scarlet, amen, I will wash you white as the snow. 
Amen. Did these men realize they were dirty? Listen to me, folks. We're sinners. Amen. Saved by God's marvelous grace. Grover, we've all sinned and we've all come short. But hallelujah, praise God today. My sins have been washed away. What about yours? Amen. Listen, they became under conviction that day. And they wanted help. Hey, I want that Jesus, Peter, that you're preaching about. Anybody want that Jesus today? Oh, listen, they realized they were naked. Amen? I want you to know something today, folks. Oh, listen, they were naked, but I want you to know today, I've been clothed today. Amen? In the blood of Jesus today. His righteousness has clothed me this morning. Amen? So if you're here today and you're naked, I ain't looking. But if you're here today and your sins have been exposed, that's what I'm preaching about. Amen? Today, under my message, your sins have been exposed. And you're naked. You stand before God Almighty today in your sin, in your shame, in your sorrow, in your iniquity. And my goodness, you stand before Him today and you're naked. I want you to know someday, He wants to clothe you this morning. What do you think? Ain't that the way it works? I went to church that Saturday night that I got saved and this is the way it works. Everybody thinks that when you get saved, you're supposed to jump about eight pews and you're supposed to see stars and you're supposed to jump up and down and scream and holler. And uh, listen, that's good if you do that. I don't care. Jump and scream all you want to. But I want you to know this. There better be something inside of you change when you get saved. That hole that's in you, that void that's in you, that part I'm preaching about today, that is pricked, that is hurting, that is scared, that is sorrowful, that part inside of them, that part inside of you. When you get saved, God fixes that. Amen. Oh, I believe that they became in great fear. James, I remember when I came under conviction that night, all of a sudden I was scared to death. Huh? Preacher, what do you mean you were scared? Does any of you all remember any of this? Or, or am I? God, I want to see some hands. Any of you all remember going through it? I remember Luke Jones at a Bible school. Luke, I'm going to pick on you. I, everybody in the church was concerned about Luke. And a preacher prayed for Luke. And a preacher, where's Luke? I remember at a Bible school. I remember a young man standing right here where Bobby Williams was. And I remember God breaking his heart. And when that happened, guess what? Luke went, phew! Didn't you, Luke? Run in the Sunday school room. I thought, that's all right. As soon as we get done praying, I'm going to go find that old boy. Guess what? When I got over there, this is the change that happens. What, once you come under conviction, it changes you. you. You can't get away from it. Do you realize what I'm saying? I, I got over there and guess what? Same old Luke, same old big feet, same old smelly. But when I got over there, Luke was still broken hearted. Listen to me. You can go to church the rest of your life. And if you don't accept Christ as your Savior, you'll still be broken hearted. Amen. We got over there and we prayed, Luke, and it's been great, right? Yeah. Listen to me. They became under fear. I saw grown men, when God deals with them, it changes them. Huh? Something else happened. When I came under conviction, instantly I was in torment. Amen? Does anybody like to be tormented? Does anybody like to be bothered? Does anybody like to... Oh my goodness. I'm coming to a close in just a minute. Does, I want you to think about the first question I asked. Does anybody feel like they need to be saved? I want you to think about that for a few minutes. Now listen, it ain't so much that you could be saved. It ain't so much that you can be saved. What it really is is that you've got to be saved. 
Amen. There is no other way. There is no other choice. There is no other road, Charles. You, you must be born again. When, when Nicodemus came to Christ, he didn't say, well, if you want to, or well, if you have time, or well, if you think you want to. He said, ye must be born again. You with me? I was in torment. There's people in this congregation. Come get you a song. I'm going to come to a close. There is people in this congregation that have been in torment ever since the first Sunday I preached here. Hmm? I know there's at least one. Life. You've been in torment. Ever since the first Sunday. Huh? You know why? Because you're lost. You know why? Because there's a hole inside of you. And there's a big empty spot and there's a void and, and there's something missing in your life. Let me ask you a question. The Bible talks about how that we would sit in heavenly places. How long has it been since you sat in a heavenly place? Amen? I mean, how long has it been since the Spirit of God filled the vehicle with you? Or, or how long has it been since you were out there fishing and, and God just poured Himself all over you? Or, or how long has it been since you sat on the front porch reading your Bible and the tears just began to pour? How long has it been since you felt Him? That's my message. I can feel Him today. What about you? I'm not perfect. I sin and come short. And, and if Paul was the chief, I, I must be the chief's chief of sinners. You know what I mean? If Paul said that, Bobby, I, I know where that puts me. But through every single bit of that, one thing remains constant in my life. And that's that spot inside of me. Huh? That's that spot I'm preaching about today. You know what I mean. That's the spot that Jesus abides in my life. What do you think? Can you feel Him today? Have you got an empty spot? Are you missing it today? Are you void inside? One more thing happened. Everybody stand. When I was pricked in my heart, the same thing happened that happened right here in verse 37, I was drawn to Him. In other words, when that, that pricking took place in my heart, when it pierced me, when conviction set up, I realized how dirty I was. I realized how shameful I was. I realized how rotten I was. I realized I was naked. I, I realized all these things. Amazing how this happened. At the very same time that happened, I was drawn to Him. You know why that is? Because that spot inside of me that was hurting, that was empty, that was void, that spot inside of me knew. Listen. It knew that nothing else could fill that spot. Do you believe what I'm preaching today? You know how that spot knew what it needed? It wasn't because of the preacher. It wasn't because of the Bible. It wasn't because who mom was. and It wasn't because who dad was. It wasn't because of the Sunday school teacher. And this morning, it's not because of me. The reason that spot knew it was because the man that created it was drawing it. Or some of y'all don't have a clue what I'm preaching about today. You need to be saved. Amen? Preacher, I'm a member down there at the church. That's all fine and well. That will not... Listen to me. 
that roll that we've got, that church book, you can try to cram it in that spot all you want to. It can't feel it. Membership. Take your foot and put on every rock in the Holy Land. Sing every song in the Red Book. And know all the Bible. And you still can't get there. You got to know Jesus as your personal Savior. That void that's inside of you has got to be filled. All right, now I'm going to ask you the question again. Man, it's hot in here. I'm going to ask you this question one more time. Is there anybody here today that realizes they're a sinner, that knows that that spot inside of them is empty? That feels naked? That looks nasty? That has torment? Would you like to get rid of the torment today? Come and accept Christ as your Savior. While we sing, I want to invite you to come.